welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and in this video tutorial we will be talking about endoplasmic reticulum we have been talking about different organelles in the part of the cell now ER or endoplasmic reticulum is one of the very very important and integrated system that is present in eukaryotic cell okay and if you look at the eukaryotic cell a typical eukaryotic cell it is composed of so many different organelles but mainly uh, the primary unit that is the cell membrane that is holding everything inside the cell together and then inside the cell we have the cytoplasm and in the cytosol we have the organelles now in the cytosol we have the biggest organelle that is the nucleus which which contains the most volume consume the most volume uh, compared to any other organelles of the cell and then if you look at here that the envelope the nuclear envelope is kind of a fused with very close proximity with some sort of what we say is sac like thing okay there all these things they form like sacs and those sacs are combined with each other and they're known as cisterni or cisterna whatever now the cisterni that you see they have extremely similar structure just like the nuclear envelope and they are double membrane bound that means if you look at the cell membrane it is a dual layer or double layer of phospholipids Similarly, that double layer of phospholipid that we see in the cell membrane is the same thing that we also find in this lamina or construction of lamina. And these regions that we know of is known as the endoplasmic reticulum, which is a part of this nuclear uh, part of this lamina unit or, or cisterni unit. Sorry, cisterni. And if you look at here, it starts with the nucleus here. Nuclear envelope is also bilayer. Then very close proximity to the nuclear envelope there are a series of those cisterni attached one with another if you see they are all attached from the beginning just like through tunnels they are all attached to all these places up till they are sometimes fused with membrane itself okay now why so and right after that if you just start with nucleus you go a little bit away from it you will find this endoplasmic reticulum this is ER and if you go little outside of this, you will find another similar structure, but smaller. This is known as Golgi apparatus or Golgi bodies. Okay. Now, they have very similar structures because they involved in a very specific task where they all play critical role. Okay. For example, it starts with this in this ER because ER or endoplasmic reticulum is a place where the proteins are synthesized and inserted okay because remember I always told you that proteins synthesized in the cytosol okay because this ER Golgi everything present in the cytosol we can say that the idea is the protein synthesis reaction is done or is used is, is, proteins are made by the ribosomes right because ribosome is the machinery with which the proteins are synthesized now ribosomes are not found scattered in the cytosol just like floating around it's never found like that ribosomes instead are attached with this endoplasmic reticulum surface okay because this surface is also a double membrane so ribosomes are attached with the surface membranes of endoplasmic reticulum okay and as they start producing proteins because mrna will go and ribosomes sit on the surface of mrna and then attached with the er so as they continue to make proteins, make polypeptide chain, that polypeptide chain is slowly inserted inside this ER lumen. So this part or inside region of the ER is known as ER lumen and outside of it is the cytosol. Okay. So let's draw this a little uh, in, in more detail, it will be more clear. Let's say here, this is the double membrane and in some place here we have a specific receptor protein in the middle of the ER and what we see here is the ribosome small unit say large unit and small unit of the ribosome and mRNA let's draw the mRNA let's say this is the mRNA so as they start making proteins let's say they start making proteins from there polypeptide sequences so as they start making the polypeptide sequences there are some adapter proteins these are known as signal recognition protein or signal recognition particle SRP. Now the signal recognition protein will interact with the newly synthesized polypeptide chain because that polypeptide chain contains 
specific signal signal means stretch of amino acid sequence that is denoted uh, or that denotes uh, the internalization inside the ER lumen because if you consider this is the cytosol this is the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum so what you will find is that the protein that they newly synthesize it contains few stretch of amino acid sequence which act as a signal it is known as uh, the ER lumen localization signal and this localization signal can be received by this SRP or is detected by the SRP. SRP detects the signal, it will cleave it and then they will take rest of the protein and put it inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. So now if we go back to the big picture, let's assume this is the ribosome sitting there. Okay. So as they are making proteins, let's say these black dots are proteins, so the proteins will be inserted inside the ER lumen. So this ER lumen contains lot of proteins that are synthesized. Now why we synthesize proteins and put them in ER lumen? Because the proteins that we develop, they are in the very straight simple format that is a polypeptide format. And you know that protein that are developed earlier are only addition of amino acids together. And those amino acids and the structure of the proteins that we get earlier, the simple structure like, like say amino acid 1 attached with amino acid 2, amino acid 3, that is known as the primary structure of the protein. Now this primary structure of the proteins are folded to make secondary, then tertiary, then even quaternary structures, right? So during this folding and unfolding, there are further types of chemical modifications that go on all these proteins and in fact most of the proteins. Now those chemical modifications are taken place in this Golgi apparatus. While the folding and slight chemical modification can take place in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen itself. So as I told you that they are organized in this fashion because they have a specific task to do and the task is to modify proteins. Once the proteins are produced, they modify the proteins, chemical modifications and this is known as post-translational modification because the modifications are taking place after the translation, after the protein synthesis. Okay. So here, so ribosomes, if I draw ribosomes now here, you will find let's say green dots are ribosomes, so you will find lot of ribosomes attached to this endoplasmic reticulum. Now the endoplasmic reticulum near to the nucleus contains lot of ribosomes and stuff. Now those endoplasmic reticulum contains lot of ribosomes sitting on the surface is known as rough endoplasmic reticulum or RER. It is known as rough endoplasmic reticulum. Why rough? Because if you look at the endoplasmic reticulum, you will see small beads attached to the surface. Those are ribosomes. So they are not smooth, filled with ribosomes, so rough. Now there is another version of endoplasmic reticulum also found in the cell, which is known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So let me divide them and write the division here. One is rough, known as RER, and smooth. S E R. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not contain any ribosome. So any ribosome is not attached to the surface of that. Okay, so it's completely blank, it's smooth. Now the smooth endoplasmic reticulum that we know of is also very important uh, for some sort of protein or some molecule production, not exactly the typical proteins because most of the typical proteins that we produce, they are actually produced in this rough endoplasmic reticulum. While the smooth endoplasmic reticulums, they also help in the production of phospholipids. They help in the production of sterols, right? So these are the importance of smooth endoplasmic reticulum for the modification and storage purpose of steroids as well as storage purpose of calcium. Now the smooth endoplasmic reticulums most often are the highest reservoir of stored calcium inside the cell. Okay, so that is another functionality of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. They store things there, store calcium, store steroids and stuff. And they also help in the production of steroids and phospholipids in small extent. 
So this is the role of ER. Now the idea is, as you know, the ER is in very close proximity with the Golgi apparatus. So what happens actually, once the proteins are produced, they are inserted into the ER lumen and they are properly folded there. Once they are folded, then those proteins will, tra will be transferred to the Golgi apparatus for further chemical modifications. And Golgi apparatus is a place or Golgi body is a, is a proper organelle structure who can only not only take the proteins, they modify proteins and also sort the proteins. It's just like the post office for the cell. So they will drag all the proteins that are synthesized inside the cell. But remember among that protein population, some of the proteins should be destined to go inside the mitochondria. Some of the proteins are destined to go in outside the cell as the secretory proteins such as some enzymes and factors. So they carry specific signals for that. If they need to transfer inside the mitochondria, they will carry mitochondrial localization signal. If they need to transfer inside the nucleus, they will carry nuclear localization signal. So this use the, with the help of this use of the, this localization signals, Golgi apparatus sort all those proteins and then deliver those proteins to the proper destination. Then deliver the protein, if it's destined to the nucleus, it will deliver. If it's destined to the mitochondria, it will deliver and do the job. So this is the idea of uh, how endoplasmic reticulum is working along with the Golgi apparatus to finally transport specific important proteins inside the cell and deliver it to its proper destination. Okay. So what happens, how they crosstalk actually, this Golgi apparatus are produced due to the extensive portion of the ER. So whatever thing that we see in all them, they are mostly just made up with same components because they are the extension units of each other. Now what, what they will do is that uh, the proteins, once the proteins are produced inside, let's say the proteins are produced here inside and the proteins are inside the vesicle. Now the vesicle will go and fuse with the Golgi apparatus and they will start making the Golgi apparatus bigger and bigger. So Golgi apparatus, and this red vesicle will fuse with the apparatus. As a result, the protein will be delivered inside the Golgi and then Golgi will sort them. Let's say that protein contains a signal of nuclear localization. So Golgi will further drag those protein into a vehicle which will be created from Golgi and that vehicle will go and deliver that protein inside the nucleus. Okay, if it's a nuclear localization signal. So this is how the cell works. This is how the cell knows which proteins to deliver where and all the functionality. That in a sense is the job of endoplasmic reticulum. It plays a very important role uh, and also provides some sort of structural role in very little extent because as it provides a lot of surface area, if you see a lot of area they provide, a lot of surface area and that will help more ribosomes to seed so more proteins can be produced in less amount of time. That is also a very important thing or compartmentalization of cell can also be done by this endoplasmic reticulum. So it's also important for the compartmentalization so that the cell can do different tasks in the different regions. That is also very important. So this in a sense is the structure and function of endoplasmic reticulum. If you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and definitely share this video with your friends. Thank you.